Hi everybody, I am Carolyn Byers, the Education Director at Madison Audubon, and I'm here for another live lesson today. It's awesome. So usually I am out in the community teaching kids and adults in person, um, but these days we're trying to do everything remotely. Um, so usually during the school year I'm working with about 200 to 300 kids a week at schools and community centers, and that's just not possible right now. But we have a new page added to our web page called Safer and Funner at Home. And uh, so that's madisonaudubon.org. And you want to go to the uh, Safer and Funner page. And all of our lessons that we're doing right now are video lessons and a lot of, um, lot of other stuff too. It's on there ready for you to use with your kids or yourself and just get excited about nature. Um, all of them are things you can do while social distancing, um, either inside or outside. So plenty of options for loving on nature. Um, all right, so today we're going to be doing a lesson about leaves, and uh, I love it. I think it's going to be really great. And I, in Madison, um, where we are right now, we've had some rainy days these past few days. It's really rainy today, too. Um, but all that rain has made all of the green things just pop. Um, grass looks better. The leaves are starting to emerge. Um, well, get bigger, not just emerge. <laughs> There's a lot of green out there. Um, so I thought this would be a really fun time to do this lesson. Um, so you don't need anything for it. Um, if you want, you can go to the plants, the exploring plants part of our Safer and Funner page, and you can look at the, um, the leaf ID sheet. This is what we're going to be using today. So if you want, you can bring that up on a different screen, um, but I'm going to be showing you the parts that we need while we're doing this lesson. Um, and I'll make sure to link it in the comments later, okay? Um, and if you really want, you can go get some leaves, <laughs> but I have a lot to share, okay? Um, later in the lesson, near the end, we're gonna be doing eight minute notes. So if you want to join in for that part, you can get ready with a paper and a pen or a pencil, whatever you like, or your nature journal if you made one already. <laughs> okay, um, so leaves are really neat. Uh, I think they're cool, well, first of all, they help, they make plants food, um, which is really amazing. I mean, I have to eat food if I want to have energy and if I want to grow, but plants can just make it using things from their environment. Um, so leaves are really important for plants, but I think they're really neat because they tell me a lot about the type of habitat that I'm in. So I can take a look at the leaves and learn about the plants that are there. And if I have a field guide or if I know a lot about plants, um, I can, I can, identify what plants they are, which is awesome. And if you know something about animals and insects, then you can kind of guess at what kinds of animals you might find in that area based on the plants that are there. So really everything in our environment is so connected. And if you know a little bit about one piece, you can learn things about the other pieces. And that's why I love plants. They're cool. Um, so what we're going to do today is not learn how to identify leaves, like this leaf is a maple leaf. We're not going to do that kind of thing. We're going to look at all of the different parts of the leaves and learn, learn what to look for. So for example, we did a lesson last week on bird identification and we talked about field marks and we talked about how um, beak shape and the different feet that <laughs> feet, <laughs> the different kinds of feet that birds have um, or their wing shape. Those are all adaptations that birds have. And before you really start learning to identify birds, you might not know which parts of the birds to look at to figure out what kind of bird it is. But after you start getting better at bird identification, you can really quickly look at um, whether there are wing bars or an eye ring or, you know, a, a cap on its head. Um, so once you know those field marks, you know what to look for to figure out what it is. And the same is true for plants. So once you know the parts of the plant to look at, uh, you can identify them a lot quicker. So that's what we're going to be doing today, right now. All right. So I have this really cool... Oh, it's all backwards. Oh, I didn't think this through today. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I have this really cool leaf identification sheet, and I promise you won't need to read the words too much. It's mostly looking at pictures, so don't worry that it's backwards. 
even though that was very silly of me. Um, so this leaf ID sheet is broken up into parts. And if you've ever made an avatar for a video game, that's kind of what this sheet is like. So you can pick different sections and uh, take each one and make up your own leaf or identify your leaf. So for example, this section here is all leaf bases. It's the bottom of the leaf near where the stem of the leaf is, where it attaches. And it's all these different shapes of the bottom of the leaves. So you can take any of these leaf bottoms, and over here we have the leaf, it's called apices or apices. It's actually just a fancy word for saying tips, the tip of the leaf. So you can take any of these leaf bases and attach them to any of these leaf tips. And those are going to be, hi Johnny, good to see you. <laughs> um, those are going to be the, well, you, the, these are ways to describe the parts of the leaf. So we have science words next to them, words scientists use to describe the, the shapes that are here. So there's an accumulate leaf tip, which is very, very pointy. Um, we also have a truncate leaf base which is, uh, it's kind of like the bottom of a triangle. But this sheet also has numbers because sometimes these words are, they're just really big and they're hard to say sometimes if you're, uh, well, for anybody. <laughs> um, and so I didn't want the words to be a barrier. So you can use the numbers to talk about the shapes you're seeing, okay? Um, so let's see, the different parts of the leaf that we're going to be looking at today are the leaf tips, the leaf bases, and these are called leaf margins. That just means edges, so the edges of the leaves here. So we are not talking about the overall shape of the leaf, but the type of edge that is on the leaf. So for example, this one is called an entire leaf edge or leaf margin. It's very, very smooth. And this one is called dentate. It has little bumps. And I like to remember dentate because it sounds a little like dentist, like teeth. And it reminds me of little teeth along the edge of the leaf. And serrate is also bumpy. It maybe has bigger bumps than dentate. And you don't need to remember all this because it's on the sheet. You can use it later. Um, and then on the back of the sheet, there's even more. So over here, we have the different shapes of the leaf veins, where they attach, uh, or not attach, where they begin near the stem and how they move through the leaf. Um, and we have the basic leaf shapes. And there's lots of different shapes there. And there's a few other things on there that we'll get to a little later. So are you ready for a leaf? I'm ready. <laughs> so I went on a walk today took my dog for a walk and my toddler. We had to get outside and my dog had to poop. And I collected a few leaves. And the leaves that I brought um, are, they're green. They were still growing today. And if I could, I found them from the ground, like where maybe a squirrel had um, nibbled some to gather it for a nest, but then some fell. Um, and others I picked right from the tree. And ordinarily, I would say that you should take this sheet out into nature and not pick living things. Because if everybody went out and picked leaves from trees, the trees would probably, uh, they, would, they would suffer a little bit. <laughs> but because I had to do this lesson in my home today, I picked a few of the leaves. And the trees have tons of them. It'll be okay for this one lesson. So here's my first leaf. There it is. It's a beautiful leaf. I like it a lot. So it has a very smooth edge. It's got a pointy tip. It has a base that is very smooth and gradual, and it does have lots of veins in there. So let's take a look at our sheet and explore this leaf. So first I wanna start out with leaf shapes on the back. And a lot of these leaf shapes, um, they're, well, first of all, this sheet doesn't have every single leaf shape or tip on it, okay? Um, and so you, want to find the thing that is closest to it, okay? It's not gonna be exact for this, for this today. So the leaf shapes, we have a linear leaf that looks like a pine needle, the oblong, elliptical, and lanceolate, and uh, ovate, ovate. <laughs> They're all very, very long and skinny. 
And it's possible that our leaf looks like an ovate leaf. Let me hold it up there for you. Ooh, it's fallen a little bit. See how it's, it looks a little bit like a raindrop. It gets wider at the middle and it's a little narrower at the tip and the base. That looks a lot like this leaf. leaf. Um, it doesn't look like this one because it's very wide at the tip. It doesn't look like this one. This one looks like a rainbow. Um, and same with this one. So it's really just a matching game. <laughs> so I think our leaf looks the most like the ovate leaf, number five. Cool, so we figured out the leaf shape. I think next we should look at the leaf venation. So venation is just the veins in the leaf and the veins help carry nutrients to all the different parts of the leaf. Um, and leaves have a few different types a few different types of venation. So parallel veins run the entire length of the blade and they, they run parallel to each other. So parallel lines are lines that go next to each other. They never cross and they usually don't wiggle too much either. They're very straight. Um, you can find those on, on grass for sure. Okay, um, pinnate, these leaves are veins. These are what we have on our leaf here. So there's one long one running down the middle of it. And then all the other veins branch off from that long middle one and they reach up towards the edges of the leaf. And you can see here, there's that one long one and here's all of the veins reaching down from the middle out to the edges of the leaf. So we have a pinnately veined leaf. This one is my favorite leaf veination. Did you guys know I had a favorite leaf veination? It is, it's this one. It's called palmate. And they all start right at the base of the leaf stem and then they radiate out towards the tips of the leaves. And I like to remember that one because it's kind of like my fingers. If I were to draw lines down my fingers, they would all meet at the center of my palm and go out towards the edge. So if my hand were a leaf, it would be palmately veined. I like it. And the last one on here is a dichotomous leaf. And they look, it, it kind of looks a lot like palmate to me, but um, only the ginkgo tree here is dichotomous. And I will show you one of those leaves a little bit later, okay? All right, so we got all the leaf shapes. We got some leaf veination. Are you ready for the leaf margins? Let's take a look. Let's take a really close look. So here is my leaf, and I'm gonna go like this so you can see it really nicely. So this leaf edge right here is so, so smooth. Even when I look at it very, very closely, well, very, very closely, it has teeny, tiny, tiny, tiny little bumps on it. But that's closer than we're, we're looking for right now, because I think if we looked very closely at any leaf, it would have, um, it would have little rough edges to it. But this leaf is so, so smooth. So I'm gonna look at my sheet and I'm gonna find the smoothest leaf edge that I can. These are not smooth. Nope, 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 nope. It's this one. Number one, an entire, entire leaf margin. All right, so we have an ovate leaf shape. We have a pinnate venation. We have an entire leaf margin. Now we get to be my favorite part. I told you my favorite type of leaf venation. My favorite parts are the apices and the bases. I love looking at the tips of these leaves. Do you know why? Because you can just put the tip right up next to it like this and see what it matches. Oh, yep, those are the tips over on this side. Those are the tips. <laughs> cool. Um, and I think our leaf tip, and this is where it gets tricky too, because this, this leaf tip has a very teeny tiny point on it, but the most of the leaf is rounded over. So I'm gonna use the very end, the very pointy end here. And that end looks like this one to me. That's an accumulate leaf tip, so number one. Um, these other ones, they just don't match and hopefully we'll be able to find it. Um, although these two down here, they might be a good match too. I was wrong and now I'm looking at it and explaining why I think I was wrong. <laughs> so this one has a very rounded part over here, they both do, and then they have a little pointy tip. So we could say that it was accumulate because it has a pointy end right there, 
Or we could say that it was cuspidate because it is rounded and then pointy at the tip. So I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to be a scientist and I'm going to I'm going to collect more data because I looked at these other options down here and I compared it to my leaf and I'm going to change my mind. I think it is not accumulate. I think it is cuspidate. Very cool. So we have that. Now we need to figure out our leaf base. All right. So these bases behave the same way as the tips. We can just look at which one matches it. Um, and the only thing I want to say about this is the attenuate leaf base down here is tricky because the, the green leafy part of the leaf actually extends all the way down the stem and looks like it connects to the twig on the tree, okay? I have not seen one of these in real life yet. I'm excited for when I do. Um, so this leaf, let's see, it's not heart-shaped at the bottom, so it's not chordate. Um, it could be rounded, but it sort of looks a little bit more oval than it does round. It's definitely not squared off. It's definitely not sagittate. Sagittate would be like if the leaf came down like this. That would be really neat, kind of pointy at the ends. I think it is cuneate, number five, right here. Let me hold my leaf next to it. Cuneate. Those two match pretty well. I like it. All right, so we found all of the parts on this leaf. The one other thing that we can do with our leaves here is the leaf attachment. And there's petiolate and sessile. And petiolate has a stem that attaches the leaf to the branch. Sessile, it looks like the leaf just starts right at the edge of the branch. There's no stem. So because this leaf has a little stem on it. It is a petiolate leaf attachment, like this one. All right, leaves are so cool. I love them a lot. This one down here, the leaf arrangement section, shows how leaves might grow on a stem or a branch. And since I mostly just took the leaves today, we can't really do that part. Okay, so I went through that leaf really slowly so that you could see how the entire sheet works. I'm just gonna show you some different leaves and point out some cool parts now. And I think that the really cool part about this sheet is taking it out into nature. So it's cool to do it on a video like this, but it's way cooler if you can go outside and look at your own leaves. So I really hope that all of you either take this, um, take this out with you or bring some leaves into your house so that you can use this sheet on a computer and check out what kind of leaves you might have, okay? All right, so I'm gonna pick a cool one next. I know I said we wouldn't be focused on identifying the leaves, but this is a really neat one. This is a ginkgo tree. And this tree is a very ancient tree. So many, many types of plants were around during the time of dinosaurs. But this, this tree, um, the ginkgo tree, was definitely around with dinosaurs and People thought it was extinct for a very long time, and then they rediscovered it in a monastery, which is really cool. Um, and then people discovered how cool the tree was, and they began planting it everywhere. And it's one that you can see in neighborhoods a lot. So this is the ginkgo leaf. It looks like a rainbow. And this is the one that had the, it's called dichotomous leaf venation. So let me show you it right next to it. This one and this one. The leaves start at the middle and they go up to the edges of the leaf like a rainbow would. And ginkgo leaves are really cool. And you should look out for them when you're on neighborhood walks. Um, they're also very smooth and the leaf edge here has little, little bumps, but they're very rounded. So let's take a look at our, our leaf edges here. And I think they look like, oh, I don't know how to say that. Creniate, number five, creniate. Um, they have little rounded bumps. Oh yeah, I think that's a match. Nice. All right, so we talked about our ginkgo leaf. We talked about this little leaf. What else do I have? I think we should do this one. This is a type of maple leaf. And since we weren't doing species identification today, I actually didn't look up what it is. 
I'm not a tree expert, so I don't know this one offhand. It is a maple, but I'm not sure. We have a few different types of maple here. So if anyone knows that one, you can type it in the comments, and I would love to love to share that. Um, this is a pretty cool leaf because it has, it has a lot going on as far as the leaf edge goes. Um, so let's do the veination first because I think that is the easiest part to identify. So out of all of these, the palmate leaf veination is the one that matches the most. The veins all start down here and they go up like the fingers in your hand do. So this is a palmate leaf veination. Ooh, Pamela says it's a silver maple. Cool, I'll have to, I'll have to look it up, double check. We should all be good scientists and check the information we get. Thanks, Pamela, for telling me where to start on my search. It's great. Um, so we have a palmate, palmate veins, we said. I think we should look at the leaf shapes. Oh, Nick says he thinks it's a sugar maple. Excellent. I like it. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I'll look later. Um, so this leaf shape, I don't see it on here. So this is another one of those where you got to look for the closest thing and it just might not be on here. And I'm going to say that none of these are really close enough to say that this is our leaf. So we don't get a leaf shape for this one. Sad little maple. Um, but we can look at the different edges. Let's look at that. Um, so this leaf has really big, deep chunks taken out of it. Not, I mean, and when I say that, I, I don't mean that there are actual chunks taken out of it. This is the way the leaf should look. Nobody's been eating it or anything. Um, but it has really big grooves in the leaves. Um, I'm sure there is a plant word for that. <laughs> but I'm a bird nerd, so I don't know that. Sorry. <laughs> um, and then it also has little ones along the big, the big cuts in it. Um, so I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that this is a lacerate leaf because it has big, big chunks missing. And the lobate one is a lot smoother. It has those big grooves too, but it's very smooth. So I'm gonna say it's lacerate. And then I think those lacerated edges also have maybe some dentate edges on them. So these are the big lacerate ones, like the fingers. But then along those edges, they have little tiny, little tiny spikes that are dentate. So this leaf did not have a leaf shape on here, but it does have two different kinds of leaf margins. Pretty neat. All right, so now I want to look at the leaf base because I think that one is going to be easier to do. Nick says his grandma is a bird nerd. Nick, your grandma's real cool. <laughs> I like bird nerds a lot. I like plant nerds too. And I like, uh, what else? Insect nerds. All the nerds are great. They're good. Um, so this leaf bottom, I think, is going to be easier to do because there are many, many tips on it. So let's look. Um, it is definitely not squared or sagittate. Those two do not match. Um, it is a very, it's a wider leaf, but it is a gradual widening, I think. Um, so I would say maybe a mix between cuneate down here and a rounded leaf, maybe. Maybe a mix between the squared and the cuneate, but it does not have its own leaf bottom here. It just doesn't quite match as closely as I would want it to tricky. And the leaf apices, let's see that, apices. So these leaf edges are, well this one broke a little bit, let's look at this one. They are very long and pointy. Let's try to get my camera to focus on it. Very long and pointy. So I think it matches the acuminate the best. Very long and pointy tip. Hold it up. So you can see. Yep, long and pointy. Very cool. So really using this sheet and exploring leaves is just about matching the parts to the leaf. That's all it is. All right, so we looked at that maple and now I have another maple to show you. And I, I don't think I showed you this one already. All right, so this was the maple we just did. 
this maple with the very, very deep grooves in the leaves, the deep cuts in the leaves. And here is another maple. This one to me looks more like a sugar maple. Let me see if I can stick it on here. That works a little better. So this leaf has way bigger cuts in it and this leaf has much wider leaf parts. So you can see that while these are the same type of species, uh, not the same type of species, they're related to each other. They have the same general shape. But there are really big differences between the two leaves. You can tell the species apart. Very cool. Um, this one, I want to just talk about the leaf bottom because this has the same veination as the other one. It's got the same kind of leaf margins to it, but this leaf bottom is different. See, this was our old one. And this is our new leaf bottom. Very cool. So this leaf, let's see, these are the bases over here. And I think this leaf base is a sagittate leaf base because it dips down lower than where the stem meets the leaf. So if I turn this this way, so oop, other way. <laughs> I turn it this way. Here's the sagittate leaf. You can see that the leaf comes down and then goes back up and this one comes out like that and goes back up. Cool, so we had our first sagittate leaf base here. Thanks to this maple. Okay, what else should I show you? We've got, oh, this one. This one is cool but it's another one I can't identify. <laughs> this little guy is gonna grow up, or gal, it's gonna grow up to be, it is already <laughs> an oak leaf, but when it gets larger, you'll be able to see that a lot more clearly. Um, and it looks a bit, where did you go? It looks a bit like this one, but look at the veination on this. So this one, the veins all start right here and they go out, okay? This leaf, the veins, there's one running down the center, and then this one runs, starts there and runs off there. This one starts here and goes this way. That one starts there, this one starts there. So the veination on this leaf is actually pinnate, whereas the veination on this leaf was palmate. So even though they look very similar right now, they both have really deep grooves in the leaves. This one is definitely different than this one. And this is gonna be, this is a type of oak. Um, and oak leaves, they all have really, really deep, uh, it's called lobes. Um, and here is the leaf edge that is lobate. All of these are lobes of the leaf. And remember, lacerate was very jagged edges. Cool. Ooh, and Brenna, our communications director, just sent a link to, uh, or she said to try ID Pro, Tree ID Pro. Super cool, thanks Brenna. All right, so we have some maples, we have some oaks, we saw our ginkgo. I have two more things to share with you. Oopsies. One is this neat little leaf. I think it's a type of birch. I'm not sure. Again, plant bird nerd here. <laughs> but this is a really neat leaf because it is the same general shape as this one that we looked at before. Um, they both, they both sort of look a little bit like a drop of water. Well, maybe like this they do. <laughs> um, they both have pointy leaf tips. They both have pretty similar leaf bases. They're pretty round, pretty gradual. They both have veins that start on the, the midline and reach out towards the edge. Remember that is 
pinnate venation. Um, but the neat thing about this leaf is that it has a very different edge than this leaf. This one had that smooth edge that's called an entire edge. And this leaf has a very serrated edge. Um, let us find those leaf edges. So there's, there's two different ones, two different leaf edges here. There's serrate and there's dentate. And serrate has bigger grooves in it. And I think that's the one that we have here. Bigger, it looks like saw blades or like the edge of a serrated knife, serrate. So this one I'm gonna say is number four, serrate. So we've got that edge there. All right, cool. I think we went through all of my leaves. Um, so now that you know how to use this sheet and explore, explore different leaf shapes, I hope that you're able to, maybe next time you go on a nature walk, collect some leaves. Um, hopefully they'll be on the ground. You don't have to pick them off of trees. Um, and then bring them home and take a look at this sheet and try to figure out the leaf parts that you have. And later on, maybe in a week or two when the leaves are a little bit bigger, Maybe we'll do another lesson like this and actually try to identify the, um, the trees that we have out there. Um, and actually on the Madison Audubon, um, the safer and funner at home exploring plant section, there's a link to the Wisconsin Urban Tree Key. And it's something really cool that the DNR and um, I think UW-Stevens Point created together. And it's all about how to identify trees that live in neighborhoods um, or in cities. So this will be really, really cool. All right, everybody, it is time for eight minute notes. We're here, we made it. So I'm gonna stick around while we do this. And if anybody has questions, even if you don't wanna do eight minute notes, you can stick around and ask questions. Um, I'll try to answer them. And if I can't answer them, I'll write them down <laughs> so that I can try to answer them later. Um, so if you are doing eight minute notes, um, you are going to need a paper and a pen. And the first thing we're going to do with our paper is put your name on it. Cause even though we're not in school, we're still going to practice putting your names on things. Um, and then you want to put your date on it because we're going to be good scientists. So the date is May 18th, 2020. So you can either write May 18th, 2020, or you can write five 18 20. Okay, lots of ways to write the date. So once you get your date on the paper, the next thing you wanna do is take your pencil and you're gonna make a big plus sign on the paper. So we're dividing your paper up into four sections, okay? And for eight minute notes, the important part is to write down things so that you can remember it later. It's not something that you have to stress about spelling for. I'm a terrible speller, so I, I do a lot of sounding things out. Um, so you don't have to worry about spelling, you don't have to worry about writing in full sentences or using punctuation unless that's something you're practicing because it's still a good thing to practice. Um, so as long as you can understand what you're writing, that's the important part. So for our first section, you're gonna get, you're gonna get two minutes to write answers for each of the sections. And if you don't finish, you can always go back later, that's okay. Um, so for the first section, I start up here. Um, I would like you to write down something that you learned today. Um, so anything, anything that we talked about in this lesson that you want to remember, even if it's just like the web page to go find it on, write that down. All right, so you have two minutes. Ready, go. Um, and if I was going to write down something I learned today, I would write down a little bit about what young oak leaves look like because I've looked a lot at oak leaves that are the full size, but I have not looked a lot at oak leaves that are just emerging and just starting to grow. And I think, I think they look really pretty. I like them a lot. All right, does anybody have any questions? Let's see, Brenna, thanks for sharing the link for the tree ID and for safer and funner at home. Ooh, somebody said they found a leaf on the ground because of the wind yesterday and they got it at their friend's house. Very nice. I hope you are staying six feet away from your friends. <laughs> it's good to see friends. It's, it's hard to be away from them. Um, yeah, I, I really like storms because they knock all kinds of cool things down out of the trees. 
Um, you have one minute left if you're doing something you learned on eight minute notes. Um, I did find a lot of leaves on the ground because of the big rain yesterday. Um, and once after a big rainstorm, I found a pine siskin nest on the ground outside near my tree. Um, and that was a really cool thing to find because I did not know that they were nesting there until I saw the nest on the ground. And this was after, after the summer, it was a big fall storm. So I don't think the nest was hurt. Um, and I do think the chicks probably, well, I have no reason to believe that the chicks didn't leave the nest. Um, so that was cool to find, especially since it didn't really harm, harm the birds at all. Okay. You have 10 seconds left. Keep writing. Keep writing, keep writing. Excellent. Okay, three, two, one, stop. All right, so the next thing is to pick your next box. And I like to go to the one right next to the one I was writing in. So we'll have the two top boxes filled in. And for this next section, you're gonna write down something you wonder because being a scientist is all about asking good questions and trying to find out the answers to them. But the first part of that is asking questions. So it's always good to be wondering things. All right, so you need to write about something that you wondered during this lesson. Ready, go. You have two minutes. And, oh, I wondered a whole lot of things. I'm not a plant expert, so I have a lot of questions about plants. <laughs> so I wondered what species of maple this was and what species of maple this was. Um, I found this whole twig on the ground, actually, with lots of little leaves on it. And I wonder if it was a squirrel that nibbled this and then dropped it. Um, I wonder if any of you are going to be able to get outside and use this plant ID or this leaf ID guide because it was a lot of fun to make. Um, and I have a lot of fun using it with kids in person. And it's interesting using it online now. You have one minute left to write something you wonder. Um, let's see. Someone says they have a dove nest in our gutter. <laughs> they, they named her Garriott. Uh, we wanted to name it Gary and then realized it was a girl because she was keeping the eggs warm. Yeah. Um, well, I do believe for morning doves it is the female or the girl that incubates the eggs. So I think you're right there naming her Garriott. Um, but there are a lot of bird species where both the male and the female do incubate. So it's a little bit harder for scientists to know which one's the male and which one's the female then. And that's kind of cool that birds have all sorts of different strategies for raising their chicks and making sure they survive. Very cool. Thanks for sharing about your dove nest. And in your gutter, how did they do in these rainstorms? <laughs> maybe you're not in Madison, maybe it wasn't raining. Um, but I'm curious about that if you want to share any more about it. <laughs> All right, you have five seconds left to write down something that you wonder. Stop. Okay, so we have two more boxes left in our eight minute notes. So now I like to go down to this one here. So that would be the bottom left, but you can pick any one you want. Um, and for this one, you're going to write down something someone said. And it can be something that I said during the lesson, or it could be something that someone in your home said uh, while you were watching this lesson, okay? So you have two minutes to write down something someone said. Ready, go. Um, and again, this isn't important unless you want it to be, um, but usually when we're writing, um, you know, paragraphs or for school, um, when we say something that someone said, we put it in quotes. So ask a grown-up or an older sibling if you're not sure what quotation marks are. But those are two little lines that we put at the beginning of what someone said and at the end of what someone said. So the person reading it knows that it was something that was actually said. It wasn't, uh, wasn't something you said that was almost what they said. It was called a direct quote. It was what they said. And then at the end of that, usually you say something like, um, my sister said. Okay, cool. Um, so Nick says they have a red, they have a flame bush leaf. Very cool. I bet it's very bright or maybe it only becomes bright in the fall. I'm not sure. That's a neat thing to share. Um, and we have an update on the doves. Excellent. They are under an overhanging part of the roof that covers a small corner of the gutter where the nest is. Excellent. I'm glad to know that the doves picked a safe spot. Doves are 
notorious for picking, um, well, picking somewhat precarious places to nest. They don't always choose the safest spot to nest. So I'm glad to know that they are at least surviving this rain. <laughs> cool. All right, you have about 30 seconds left to write down something someone said. You might write down that I said my favorite leaf venation was palmate. Yes. You might write down that my favorite part of this sheet are the leaf tips and the bases. I like both of them. But you only have five seconds left to write, so get to writing. <laughs> All right. Three, two, one, stop. Okay, so the very last spot, we should have three boxes filled in and one empty now. The very last spot is something that you can draw. Um, and I'm going to say you can start drawing right now, and I'll let you know when the two minutes are up. But I like to draw, so I usually go for more than two minutes. Um, so you can draw anything that you saw today. Um, or if you have a leaf, if you have a leaf near you, you can draw that. You can save this for later if you want to go outside and find a leaf and bring it in, um, and then draw it into your eight-minute notes. Um, you could draw, if you have this sheet up, oops, I'm getting tangled in my cord. If you have this sheet up, um, on a screen somewhere, you could draw part of it. Um, maybe just the leaf edges, the margins, or maybe the tips, um, anything you like. Um, and Nick says he found a nest shaped like a canoe. Very cool. Um, I know a lot about bird nests, but I can't think of one that was shaped like a canoe. Um, I do know that sometimes if birds are building nests up against human structures, or even against natural ones, sometimes they push the edges of their nest to sort of fill the shape, um, a little like a cat in a basket, if you will. Um, and so sometimes robin nests aren't round. They might have some squared edges to them. Um, I have seen red-winged blackbirds nests look a little oddly shaped because they're building it around the vegetation uh, that's supporting their nest. Um, so there are there are some interesting ways bird nests can, sh uh, their shapes can vary depending on where the bird is building the nest. So that's a pretty cool find. Um, I'd be interested to know more about it, Nick, if you want to share some more details about <laughs> your bird nest. Um, and I'm going to admit that I truly don't know when we started this. Uh, so I think we have about a minute left, <laughs> but I forgot. So you have one more minute to keep drawing unless you're just going to abandon all rules and keep drawing for the rest of the day. <sighs> That'd be fun, huh? <laughs> all right. Who has any more questions while we're just finishing up our eight minute notes? Anything? What do you got? I think leaves are neat. I'm excited for more plants to come up. We've been um, going on hikes lately, um, staying away from other people while we do it, but we've been going on hikes and we have been looking for spring ephemerals. And those are plants that come out in the springtime before the trees all leaf out. Um, so that's when lots of sunlight is hitting the forest floor. Um, and I am, well, we probably don't have much time left for spring ephemerals since the leaves are getting so big. Um, so maybe this weekend we'll be able to get out and go hiking and see some more. Okay, stop drawing. Um, let's see, someone else says the flame bush leaf is serrated. Very cool, I didn't know that. Um, and someone else says we have geese by our pond. We also have muskrats and way too many mosquitoes. Oof, mosquitoes are rough, but they are a huge part of the food chain. So many animals eat mosquitoes and... As much as I don't like mosquitoes, I really love all the animals that eat them. Uh, like lots of frogs and lots of birds that are insectivores, like um, barn swallows and tree swallows and night hawks. So mosquitoes, don't love them. All the animals that eat them, awesome. <laughs> okay, so we're all done doing our eight-minute notes. Um, I want to share one other cool thing that is on our... Um, safer and Fronter at Home Exploring Plants page, and that is Planto. And maybe we'll do a whole nother lesson where we all play Planto, or maybe I'll just go out on a walk and play Planto myself. But Planto is a little bit like bingo. And so there are all sorts of scavenger hunt things to find on here, like an acorn, like a 
uh, pine needle leaf. Um, like this one is a, a leaf margin that is undulate. We know what that is now. Very cool. This leaf is one that got eaten by insects. Um, so there's all of these things that you can find on a scavenger hunt. And on the back of this sheet, there are parts of our leaf identification sheet that we just looked at. So we have leaf tips, we have leaf bases, we have the margins, leaf shapes up here. So all of these things here can help you find these things. And this is another thing that you can download for free on our website, um, or you can just bring it with you on your phone if you don't have a printer. I'm really low on ink right now, so I understand if you can't print. Um, so this is a really cool game to play, and you can either go on a hike and try to find all these things, or you could um, you could all be in a group, everyone in your family, or later, and when it's safe to be with a lot of people together, you can have everyone in your group um, meet in the meet in a circle, and then say one, two, three, go, and everyone goes and they find a leaf and they bring it back, and then we can see how many of these things you can check off. Okay. Excellent. All right, so we talked about all the different parts of a leaf that we can look at, and we'll use that in our next leaf lesson about how to identify leaves. And we did some eight-minute notes. We talked about Planto. I want to say thank you to everybody who joined us today. Um, and it was a lot of fun doing this lesson for you. Plants are cool. I really like sharing them with people. And if you have more questions about them, type them in the comments and hopefully we'll be able to get you an answer because we're watching those comments. Don't worry. Um, I also want to say that all of our programming is free. So when we're out teaching kids, um, my time teaching them at their school or community center is free. And often we take them on free field trips too. And our education programming online right now is free too. You can just download it, use it, share it. Um, so if you, if you have the means and you like our programming and you want to help keep it free, please, um, we're going to toss a link in the comments, follow it over to our donation page, and maybe you can send us a small donation. But if not, it's still going to be free for you. So enjoy, because everyone needs a little bit more nature right now. Okay, be well, be safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.